Hi everyone, my name is Lisa Mahoney. I'm the Recycling Manager for the City of Baton Rouge and East Baton Rouge Parish. Um, so I'm responsible for the recycling efforts, um, you know, both for the residential system um, and for the city at large. So today I'm going to talk to you guys about recycling rights. Um, it is very important that we recycle correctly because um, contamination exists when you don't recycle correctly and that causes um, extreme problems to the system. And so I'm here today to kind of go through it with you guys. So um, before we go through, um, you know, recycling correctly, I guess I just wanted to make sure you understood. Today, we're going to really focus on the um, proper uh, things you need to know about the curbside recycling program. There are many ways you can recycle. There are drop-off programs. There's industry-specific programs for your electronic waste or your household hazardous waste. Um, but today, we're really going to focus on the curbside recycling program, which are the 64-gallon carts um, that are collected weekly at your curb that I hope every one of you guys have. Um, if you don't have it, feel free to call our 311 system and request one. It is available to you. All you have to do is request it. Um, so let's go through it. All right. So the paper, we'll go through paper first. Um, paper is a really common uh, material that you can recycle through our program. It's probably the highest in terms of volume. There's just a lot of paper that we use in our daily lives, um, especially with our, um, you know, packaging, our at-home packaging that we get. Um, there's a lot of paper that's produced from that. So it's important that we know what type of paper we can recycle. So any of your, you know, white paper um, is recyclable. If there are paper clips attached to the um, paper, we want to remove those and discard of them, um, and then you know put them in your recycling bin. Um, but before again, let me back up. Um, our recycle bins are typically blue in color, and we have the recycle symbol on them. It is equally important that we are um, we have the right tools to recycle properly. So you want to make sure you have a separate container. Um, to recycle, and we usually use the blue container. Although if you don't have a blue container, you can certainly use any type of container. Um, but you want to make sure the lay, you know, have some sort of label on the container, so anyone who uses that understands what goes in the cart. And if you need labels, our office is happy to provide those to you. Um, you could go to our website at brla.gov/recycle, and um, our, you know, contact information is on there. Just go ahead and request as many labels as you need, and we'll be happy to provide that to you. So here is the recycle cart that we are going to use today um, for demonstration purposes. And this is the trash container. Um, and so as you can see, this trash container um, is bagged. Um, it has a, a, a liner in it. Um, and the recycle container does not have a liner in it. So um, it's important that we recognize that we don't want to line the recycle containers with any sort of plastic because bagging recyclables is the number one no-no um, and it's the number one thing that people do um, because it is convenient to bag things but it, we don't want anything bagged um, if you do bag it unfortunately if all that material is good quality material that's recyclable um, it will end up getting thrown in the trash because we don't have the capacity at the sorting system to um, bust those bags open and and um, sort through that material um, manually. So it's important that you keep everything loose in the recycle container um, before you're throwing it out at your curb. Um, uh, conversely, the, the garbage container, we do want bagged because we don't want that loose material all over. Um, and so we wanna make sure we're bagging our garbage and cinching off the top um, before it goes in the garbage container. Um, so. Now that we've gone through that, I'm going to go ahead and put this paper in here for recycling. So any, again, any kind of um, loosely bindings that you have, you can use any magazines or junk mail, anything like that. You can recycle. It's called mixed paper. Um, I get a lot of questions about envelopes. There's a, a little plastic piece on the envelope that kind of shows the, um, the label on it and or it's a label. 
we it's, it's not necessary to take that part off. You can just recycle it um, as is. But your notebooks or any sort of spiral bound um, book, we want we cannot. It's problematic to the processor to um, take these spiral binds out. And so if you want to recycle this paper, you're going to have to remove the binding from, from um, the paper and, and recycle the paper. But uh, especially the, the metal bindings are extremely difficult. So um, this is a plastic binding and a metal binding. So if you, again, want to recycle your notebooks, you got to remove the paper first. Um, something new that we can recycle now is our hardback books. So if you, you know, at the end of your school term, if you're done with your books and you can't use them for next year, you can recycle these. If um, there was an issue with the binding uh, in the past, but there is no issue, they figured that part out. So you can put this in your recycle bin, as well as your soft back books. Um, any of your, um, you know, folders, as long as the folder doesn't have any metal attached to it, um, then you can recycle it. You would need to remove this metal first before putting it in the bin. Okay, boxes. Yes, we love boxes. Um, we want boxes. Um, with COVID and everything that happened, we are not getting enough boxes because boxes mainly came from the commercial stream. And so, you know, the industry really does need your boxes. It's just important um, before putting them in the recycle bin to remove the plastic or if there's any sort of plastic packaging that comes with your um, product, please remove this plastic packaging um, and break down your boxes if you can. Um, it's not necessary to remove the tape. If there's a little bit of tape on the box, it's fine. Um, but yeah, it's uh, just go ahead and break this down and you can put it in your bin. If the box is really too big um, to put in the bin, you got a big product um, in the mail, you can put it next to your recycling cart um, and they will pick it up as, as recyclable. So again, this is like a smaller box. Just make sure before putting it in the recycle bin to remove the, the plastic packaging. All right. Um, one other thing to notice, note about the paper, um, Paper clips remove, but the staples are okay. You do not have to remove the staples. That would be exhausting. So <laughs> go ahead and put it in your bin with the staples in there. Um, napkins. We get a lot of napkins and paper towels. We don't want this in the recycle bin. Yes, we understand that it's a fiber material, um, but why are you using these? I mean, you would use them before you would need to discard of them. And Chances are the items on the napkin are not recyclable, um, has organic material on it. So we don't want napkins or um, tissue paper or of any type, but you can recycle, um, you know, the, the roll or the, the cardboard um, that's attached to any of your paper towels or your toilet paper. Um, yeah, any sort of cardboard. Now cartons, um, we do not recycle cartons. This is considered a composite material, so it has a plastic lining around the, um, the carton, and there's, it's rare that there's a processor that can recycle these. There's only four in the country. We're not close to one of them. And so, unfortunately, you would have to discard of these in your trash. Um, I like to you know, if I'm, if I'm going to buy milk, I like to try to purchase it in a container that is recyclable, um, you know, such as this milk jug. So if you can find, a, you know, a similar product that you like um, that comes in a container that is recyclable, I would advise you guys to do, do that. Put this in the trash. Okay. So, um, oh, one other thing about paper. As I mentioned, the bagging, we don't want anything bagged, um, but there is an exception to every rule in recycling, and here's one of them. You, you need to sh um, bag your shredded paper because the, the particle size of the paper is really small, and it would really just not be able to be recycled if it's not bagged. 
um, just make sure that you are putting it in a clear bag so the, um, the sorters know what material is inside. If it's in a black bag, they will think it's garbage um, and chances are it won't get recycled. So just make sure you're bagging your shredded paper and you can go ahead and put this in your recycle bin. All right, okay, moving on to glass. Um, glass is pretty simple. Um, we really just want the glass jars um, and bottles. Um, just make sure to remove the lids from the um, container and discard the lids before putting the glass jars in your recycle bin. Um, most of the time these lids are met, made of metal and so we don't want this getting mixed up with the glass. And so um, I just put them in there just like that. Um, the only glass we can't recycle is like the tempered glass, um, such as like a mirror. Uh, this is a glassware. We wouldn't typically recycle these or need to recycle them unless they're broken because we reuse these. So, um, but again, if they do break, um, just throw them in the trash. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on to metal, <coughs> excuse me, I'm gonna take a sip of water here. Moving on, oh, excuse me, to metal. So the metal, um, we really want your metal can. So your soft drink cans, um, any kind of food can um, is primarily what we want recycled. Um, so we can go ahead and just make sure again that there are, that it's empty. We want everything clean and dry. Um, and when I say clean, I don't mean pristine. I just mean make sure the liquid is removed from it and the primary particles are removed. You don't have to, you know, go to town on cleaning it. Just a quick rinse and you know, put it in your bin. Um, the lids uh, of your metal containers can be recycled. Um, just make sure to kind of cinch it in there because the lids have sharp edges and so if it gets loose um, through the system, it does create a safety hazard. So um, just again, just try to cinch it in there pretty good before putting it in the bin. So um, some of the metal that we can't recycle um, are like aerosol cans. So this is empty. We just can't, we can't recycle this um, or any sort of other loose kind of metal. Uh, that you would just random pieces of metal. You would think it's recyclable. It is recyclable. You can recycle these through drop-off programs, such as a scrap metal yard, just not through our curbside program. So if you really must get rid of it, and you don't, you don't, uh, can't go to the drop-off, just go ahead and put it in your trash. This is a metal, you know, water bottle. Again, we want to reuse these. We don't really need to recycle them, but if it's broken or whatever, put it in your, put it in your um, trash can versus your recycle bin. This is not something that we can recycle through our program. Okay, so we're gonna move to plastic. Um, this is probably the most complex of all the materials that um, we're gonna go through today. So basically there's so many different types of plastics. Um, if you, I'm sure that you know there's a recycle symbol. Everybody knows what the recycle symbol is and it has a number inside. And so traditionally, anything that had the recycle symbol on it was considered recyclable, um, but that has changed. And so we don't typically use the number system when we try to promote what is and isn't recyclable through our curbside program. We try to have we sort of shifted into the shapes of the plastics to try to make things simpler because it's again quite confusing um, on what is and isn't recyclable for plastics. So um, the number number one and number two plastics are your bottle shaped plastics, and we want those. We love those. So anything that you know your kitchen, your bath, your detergent products come in. Um, those are normally bottle shaped plastics. And so we want these, just make sure to um, clean and just to rinse them and empty them before putting them in the recycle bin. And the caps, we get so many questions about the caps because in the past, you know, the caps weren't 
well, they they weren't recyclable. Um, it's a different type of plastic than the container itself, and so we have asked people to remove them. But that has shifted. We want all caps on the plastic container, so just keep the caps on before putting them in your recycle bin. So any kind of bottle, this is from soap. This is your milk. Um, you know your mouthwash. Any any kind of gotta lot here so um the only caps we don't want for plastic are the um the um these type i'm <laughs> drawing a lot on what this is but yeah we don't want the little um this type we can't we cannot recycle these so this is the only exception again to the rule um that we don't want and you could just throw these in the trash so again this had the little spray on it the spray nozzle, there you go. The nozzle, I knew it would come to me. Um, we don't want any sort of nozzle, but caps can be recycled. Any water bottle. Now, if this had water in it, just again, make sure to discard, discard the water before putting it in your recycle bin. All right, so we went through the bottles. Um, let's go through the tubs. So these are tubs, um, normally that you're um, food products come in. We can recycle these. Um, these are number fives. We can recycle these. Just be sure to remove the material from it before putting it in your recycle bin. Um, clamp, we call these clamshell containers. Um, so this is normally what your fruit comes in. We can recycle these. Um, these are also typically a number one or a number two. Um, so you can put them in your recycle bin. All right, so down to the confusing part here. Um, so this, these clamshells kind of mimic, you know, a takeout container. Um, and here is where I would suggest looking at the number, um, because these, there are sometimes different numbers and we can we can recycle the number one and number two like i was saying but sometimes these are a number six sometimes these are a number two um and so like for example this is a number six this is a number one so it's difficult to just based on looking at it based on the shape what number it is or whether it can be recycled so i would suggest looking at the number in these cases um, for, for your takeout containers and just making sure it says a number one on it um, or a number two on it. Um, if it doesn't, put, put the non-number one and number twos in your, in your trash and put the ones um, or the twos in your recycle container. Yeah, so these are just another like variety of different style takeout containers. This is, the lid is a number one and this base is a number five. So very confusing on the takeout arena. Um, so again, just look at the numbers and recycle the one and twos. All right. Um, styrofoam, never, never, ever recycle styrofoam. Um, just when you see it's foam, throw it away. Try to avoid styrofoam when possible and um, purchase your food in non-starfoam containers or don't use starfoam, but if you have to use it, you don't have a choice, throw it away. Um, again, this is kind of an odd shaped, you know, material. Just look at the number. Um, if it says one or two, um, you can recycle it. All right. Um, so yeah, I guess, do we have time to go through some of the film? Okay. So, Um, as I was saying in the beginning of the presentation, you know, we don't want any sort of plastic film in our curbside recycling system, um, but it doesn't mean you can't recycle it because there are other outlets. So it's important that you guys understand um, what those outlets are. Um, so any kind of plastic bag that, you know, you get from the grocery store that your groceries come in, um, can be recycled through back through the grocery store chains. So there are a number of them. Albertsons accepts plastic film, Target, Walmart, 
um, a few others. So just make sure to look at look um, in the kiosk in the front of the store. There's a key, there should be a kiosk, um, and they'll have an outlet for you to recycle those. So I encourage you to do that. Just don't put it in your curbside program or in our curbside program because it wrecks havoc on our system. It blocks, uh, what ends up happening is this is such a flexible material. And so when it's going through the sorting line, um, it clogs the screeners that send the material to different directions that separate out the paper from, you know, the metal um, from the glass. And so when that screen can't function properly because this material is attached, then it doesn't get sorted properly. And then they have to shut down the processing, you know, the, the machines and cut this material literally out from the screener. So it creates a lot of downtime and it's not efficient. So again, please, if you take anything away today, just don't put your plastic film or any kind of plastic bag in the recycle bin. Um, it is very confusing because it does have a number on it, which means you can recycle it, and that is correct. And just be sure to bring it to those retail outlets that I just mentioned. Um, and so here are just a few examples. It's not only your plastic bags that you get your, you know, from the grocery store, but any kind of plastic film like from that your bread comes in, um, you know, your case wrap, your tissue paper. Uh, any kind of thing that an item, a particular item comes in, you can recycle this. Just be sure it doesn't have a metal liner in it. If it has some sort of metal liner, like a chip bag or this particular bag, it's not recyclable. Just make sure it's a clear, flexible plastic. And uh, again, you can keep those and bring them back to the, uh, the grocery stores. This one is you know, a confusing one because it looks like it's paper, right? But when you look inside, it has plastic film in it. It has the, the bubble wrap in it. Um, so, you know, I wish Amazon wouldn't make these types of things because you can't recycle it. Um, so you would have to throw this away. The other thing is no kind of, um, this is like a, a bag that dog food came in, any kind of dog food or pet food bag. We can't recycle it. It's, it has, uh, it's a different type of plastic uh, material. So just stick to the, you know, the plastic, the case wrap and, um, and the bags, the regular bags that you get from the grocery store. So I think that is the end of my presentation. I know it was so much and I don't expect you guys to um, remember all of this. So again, please go to our website, um, brla.gov slash recycle, and you can, you know, find all this information. It is downloadable. If you want labels, be sure to reach out to us. We'll be happy to provide them to you and uh, be happy to entertain any questions you guys have. So thank you so much for listening.